Welcome to MT Guitar. Hope you all are doing well out there. Um, please subscribe to my channel before I forget and uh, leave a comment to say hello. We would greatly appreciate it and it would be great to connect with you. Um, today we're going to be learning Should Have Been a Cowboy by Toby Keith. And uh, it's a great song and some really great guitar parts that we're going to dive into, including the intro lick. Um, which is not so easy to play, actually, but uh, definitely doable. And then the chord progression, which is easy to play if you know if you know the chords. Um, and then the solo. And uh, I'll talk about the solo later. But there's some things that we we have to keep in mind about it that we're we're slightly modifying. Um, mainly that the strings on the solo are played on the solo. I think is played on a seven string guitar. Um, or a guitar with really heavy strings tuned down in the studio. Uh, so what we'll, what we'll do is we'll take the last phrase up an octave and it sounds fine. So um, it's a lot of fun to play on the guitar so let's dive right in. Alright so um, first thing we want to do to learn this song is obviously learn the intro and <clears throat> it's not as easy as it may sound um, because what's happening here is there's a um, two notes on the higher end of the lick that make it, you know, non-traditional as far as a lot of licks are sort of in the open position or um, and and this one isn't, which which is fine except for the fact that we hear this almost a bass line, although it's, although it's not quite low enough to be a bass line, but it's like... Right? And normally that B would just be like here. But if we do it there, we can't reach there, so we kind of have to do it up here. And there's two ways to do it. You could do it like this, meaning I'm going to fret the bass line. But that's awkward because we're, we're, we're stretching our fingers already over these two notes, which is, I should probably tell you what they are, <laughs> uh, second string, eighth fret, middle finger, tenth fret, uh, first string, pinky. See that? So um, those are there the whole time. And I, I did a video on, on the intro of Wish You Were Here where we had our fingers rooted on the third fret and we never move them and there's a similar aspect and requirement we have to do the the same thing meaning we have to leave our fingers here even as we play other notes so that being said what I do which um, which works for me is I play the open G string so I play the third string open and then I play the other notes here and now I'm not I don't play it with a pick but I'm gonna play it with a pick right now just so you can see the notes without me confusing things so I'm gonna play third string and then second string and first string and then to get to the next note I have to go to the fifth string ninth fret and then seventh string I'm sorry seventh fret fifth string and then back to ninth fret and then the second first and second strings but that's gonna be tough I'm not you know uh, I'm really uh, um, big into making huge leaps with the pick because a lot a lot can go wrong 
So what I like to do is I like to do something called hybrid picking, which is basically picking the bass and then picking the higher treble notes with your fingers. So for instance, I'm going to pick the G string, the third string, open. And then with my middle finger of my right hand, hit the second string. And with my ring finger, hit the first string. So that would be... Okay, one more time. And that pattern is going to repeat uh, somewhat. So then I'll go to the ninth fret, fifth string. And then same thing. Middle, ring, second, second and first string. But this time we go back to the second string. So... Alright? And that is anticipated, meaning this ninth fret comes on, um, on the end of the beat before. So it's like... more time together and then we go to the seventh fret same thing second and first string after that and then back to the ninth fret anticipate it second first second strings okay let's do that whole thing slowly, all right? One, two, three, four. Whoops, I messed up one more time. Okay, so that's the intro, and you can impress your friends with that. Um, not so easy to play, is it? But but you know that that kind of makes it more interesting because sometimes the challenges make us a lot better as players. Now, when we do that intro, we kind of got to quickly go to the chords from there. So after I finish this up, then as soon as I play that, I start the song. I start the chord progression on a G chord. All right, so G chord. And we have an anticipation rhythm in the chords just as we did on the intro. So if I play these chords, let's learn the chords first and then we'll go over the rhythm. G, D major, C major, D major. And uh, I'm going to be doing some theory videos later where I talk about how important that progression is. It's called a 1-4-5 progression. It shows up in literally thousands of songs. but we got one we got one five four five well or G D C D this isn't a theory lesson yet so we have G D C D and that's the anticipation I'm talking about on the D chord so if I play these chords and count the beats I'll get something like this one and two and four one and two and three four one and two and Okay, so that's the that's the uh, the rhythm of the chords and where they fall in the beats, but I I can strum it one time, which is fine, but it's it's uh, it can be a little repetitive, so we want to maybe put a few more strums in there. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a little stop on the second beat one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, by slapping my palm against the strings, by kind of hitting the strings muted. Um, so that's a technique that if you've worked up, you should be able to do quite easily. And that, that repeats throughout the whole verse. All right. So why don't we do that slowly until the chorus, and then we'll get to the, uh, the lick right before the chorus. Ready? One, two, three, four. That C is sustained, meaning it's held for an extra bar. Actually, I'm sorry, for an extra two uh, for an extra two bars. So, so in my heart, three, four, huh. actually for three bars. 
Uh, so three extra bars on that. But while that's happening, there's a, there's a neat little electric guitar lick that comes in. And I did it on the intro, and let me do it for you now. So... Okay, so that is third, third fret, first string, fifth fret, second string, fifth fret, third string. Okay, and you can see the fingerings there. Pinky on the second string, ring finger on the third string, index on the first string. And you go first string with your, so now we're picking this, first string, second string, third string. We move our first finger over to the second fret and do the same thing. So let's do that together. And then back to third fret with the first finger, but this time we bar the first two strings. And that actually is, is what leads us into the chorus. So to get all together, whoops, two, three, four, one. A little faster now. Uh. Should have been a okay, and then we play the chorus. Now the chorus is the same chords as the verse, except there's no anticipation, so it's just G, D, C, D without anticipations. So let's try that. Should have been a king. So I'm going down, 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 up, down, stuff like that. Okay. Should have been a king. Okay, but so that's there. But on the second chorus, there is no anticipation, and it leads into the solo, which is what we're going to do now. So if we go, then we go into the solo. All right. So let's jump into that. Third fret, sixth string, fifth string open, fifth string second fret, fourth string open. Okay, do that. Okay, back to second fret, fifth string, second string, open, fifth string open, third fret, second fret, fifth string open, and again. So let's do all that. Okay, then a hammer on on the second fret, then open, then third fret, sixth string. Again. So let's do all that. Okay. And then second fret open. And then again. And then fifth, fifth to third. And then play that note again. And then seventh to fifth. Okay, let's do all that. a few times you should do that before we move on because that's that's sort of the the theme of the solo and that's going to be uh, there's going to be a variation to that now so we'll last time nice and slow all right ready to move on now we started exactly the same way here the same but instead of going ba -da 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 -da, we go and then we go to fifth fret fifth string twice and then a pull off we and then we then we play it again so so that so so to recap that 
Fifth fret, fifth fret, pull off. Okay, then that sustains for a little bit. Then we slide fifth to seven. And then uh, fifth fret, fourth string. And then seventh fret, fourth string. Then fifth fret, third string. And then slide fifth fret to seventh fret. And then eighth fret, second string. And then back to ninth fret, third string. So that's a lot. Let's let's cover that again. From here, pull off two, three, four. Slide five, seven, five, seven, nine, slide nine. Let's we'll do that again with me saying the correct frets. Five, 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 three, two, three. Five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, nine, eight, nine. Should have been a. Then it goes back into the chorus. Okay, so those are all the essential parts, the intro lick, the chords on the verse, the chords on the chorus, and the solo. Well done. All right, there you go. Should have been a cowboy. You've got now the, the intro, the chords, and the solo. And um, something I recommend doing is playing along to the recording, which is always sort of a nice test to see if you were uh, playing the right notes and maybe more importantly playing the right rhythms. So um, I encourage you to, to try that and please subscribe to my channel. That would really help me out and uh, I'm going to be delivering content every day. Um, so give a, give a thumbs up and a comment if you can and uh, let me know what songs you want to hear and um, we'll see you next time. All right, have a good one.